fellow Earthlings, my name is Kyra J, and welcome to Jump Cut, a show with skits, music, and comedy created for you by you. So what do I mean? What in the tarnation am I talking about? What even is a tarnation? I knew you'd ask, so I made a short video to answer that. Roll it. Hey guys, I'm here at the Tri-C Student Production Office at the Tri-C Metro Campus. Today, I'll walk you through the things we do. The Student Production Office, also known as SPO, is responsible for original video content, like Jump Cut and all the events at the campuses. Here, the staff of Tri-C students work together like a real production office, because it's a real production office. We're an ensemble of students with many different backgrounds and disciplines, and we collaborate on a daily basis to produce all the content you see. Follow me, I'll show you. Welcome to the Thunderdome production meetings, yeah. Here's where the team discuss filming, editing, and if scripts need to be worked or flushed out. We map out projects we are currently working on. In fact, here's a script in production. Now that the script is finished, we have one of our artists work on the storyboards for the segment. This is Gil. Hey Gil, tell the audience what you're working on. Hello everybody, uh, what I'm doing is I take the script and the director's notes and draw out the storyboard so we can block out the shots and we know what we're shooting. Here are some finished ones. That was a clever push and cut. I'm here in another office with Lewis. Hey Lewis, tell us what you're working on. Hi guys, I'm working on animating the opening credits and logo for the show. That's great, I'll leave you to it. Come on, let's go to set. We are here on set filming one of the segments of the show. The production team is setting up the shots and making sure audio levels are correct. The producer is making sure we stay on schedule and the director is working with the actors and making sure the shots are ready. So the scripts are written, the storyboards are finished, and the actors have rehearsed. Filming has begun from here. There's one last step on our journey. Editing phase, come on, follow me. Now that filming is done and the director has all the shots, it's time to edit. Here with me is Thomas and Hunter. Hey, I'm Hunter. Editing can be described as the process of elimination. We sort through the clips to find the nuggets of gold. In fact, they are cutting together all the shots of the short film that we were just shooting. Part of Jump Cut Productions is the videos that we put together, and the other part is you and your videos. You may not have a production office with a staff and a bunch of equipment, but you have the most important key to making this work. Imagination. So before you go out and start productions on your own videos, wouldn't you love to see what we made? Here, watch this. Welcome to the Jump Cut Top 10 Ways to Meet a Deadline. Number 10. Disconnect from social media. You have to do work. Number 9. Set reminders in advance and mark your calendars. Number 8. Get help. Ask a friend, parent, or instructor for help. Number 7. Take breaks when needed, but maintain a steady pace. Number 6. Prepare for the worst case scenario. Number 5. Introduce yourself. Number four, meal prep and never skip leg day. Number three, 
Gather materials for a summoning circle, then summon Odsmodius, the Time Lord. He should be able to help you since he can stop time and all and help you with spell check. Number two, learn photosynthesis. It's a process used by plants and other organisms to convert light energy into chemical energy that can later be released to fuel the organisms. So you never have to take a break to sleep or eat. Duh. Number one, find a dimensional jump in a universe that has a more successful version of you and have them do it. Have them do everything. This next segment is about expressing yourself. We have a student named Malachi and this is how he handles deadlines. <laughs> I got a headline, deadline, man, I should've said a bedtime. Bedtime work, dude, that's the headline. Headline, doing work, not no bedtime. Bedtime, man, I swear I got a deadline. Deadline, man, I should've said a bedtime. Bedtime, doing work, not no bedtime. Bedtime work, dude, that's the headline, yeah. When I got work due, when I gotta put it in, should've studied real long, then I've always even in, then again, should've took notes even before I studied, then I'm not good alone, so I gotta study better, yet and I gotta be prompt, and I gotta be on time if I'm ever gonna meet any other deadline, gotta always be prepared if I'm gonna be on time, yeah. Hi guys, my name's Kyra J, and I'm here at the Western Campus with the Jump Cut team. <laughs> and we're asking students and faculty how they approach the dreaded deadline. Well, there's several different ways. Um, Obviously time management, you know, you plan out your time accordingly because everybody has to work, everybody's got family. A lack of sleep, a little bit of wine, <laughs> and a lot of time management. Actually no time management, more like cramming and trying my best. Well, I hardly ever meet deadlines. I'm usually cramming. Uh, I've been that way probably since high school. I use sticky notes and then I cross them off as I finish them. I actually don't manage <laughs> the stress of a deadline. Uh, I guess keep like a schedule, something like that. I try to usually make it on time. If I have a big assignment that will take like four hours of work, I'll do like 30 minutes of work for four days straight. You know, it's, it's, I don't really try very hard. So the way I meet deadlines is I get a lot of sleep, I get a lot of rest, um, I go hang out with my friends, get some stress. Leave. Here are the four types of students that you might see in your classroom. Meet the deadline prey. They never meet deadlines. Deadlines hunt and feed on them. They never know what hits them. They never make it to class on time and always with the wrong books. Second is the deadline terminator. They love deadlines. They chew them up and spit them out with ease. They can handle more than one and probably has the assignment done before it's due. Like he's from the future or something. The deadline challenger is always up for a fight. Ready to meet any deadline and never backs down. Everyone loves a good comeback story, and he's never an under- The last one hates deadlines. They never like them and never will. Feels no stress and turns in the assignments when they are good and ready. They never need their book, so why carry it? Here's Dr. Fred Perry explaining the origin of the word deadline. Welcome to the Word Buffet. The origin behind the word deadline has its roots as far back as 19th century warfare with a gruesome and somewhat literal etymology. Etymologists agree that the word deadline first appeared during the American Civil War. Deadline was coined at the hellish Andersonville, Georgia prison camp and appeared in several inspection reports by Confederate officers in 1864. Now, not that kind of camp, it was much worse. A report by Colonel D.T. Chandler details the hellish conditions in which prisoners had less than six square feet to call their own. The report also mentions the presence 
of a deadline. And, and, I, and I quote, and I quote, a railing around the inside of the stockade and about 20 feet from it constitutes the deadline beyond which the prisoners are not allowed to pass. So this was the origin of the word, or when we first saw the printing of a deadline. Years later, the word went through a metamorphosis, like many words throughout time, and was used to describe a line on printing presses beyond which text would not print properly. I guess it spelled doom for a few letters and words. <laughs> By 1920, the word took on the meaning it has today. Employees needed time restrictions and strict time limits in order to produce the content. Then they would print in the night so papers could be delivered to you by the morning deadline. Our last segment is with Dr. Paul Cox, the Dean of Creative Arts. Let's check in on his day. Let me introduce myself. I'm Paul Cox, Dean of Cuyahoga Community College's Creative Arts Division. And we support public programs like Jazz Fest, Tri-C Presents, and a preparatory program we call the Creative Arts Academy. And we have our academic programs throughout the college. There's theater, dance, music, filmmaking, recording arts, art, graphic design, game design, web design, animation, journalism. Well, why don't I just show you around? Come on, let's go for a ride. Our first stop is the Eastern Campus. We have amazing state-of-the-art facilities at Tri-C. Here we have the Simon and Rose Mendel Theater, where we hold dance, music, and theater performances, as well as lectures and symposia hosted by the Mendel Humanities Center. We are always focused on providing opportunities for students to showcase their work in our East Art Gallery, which holds several exhibitions throughout the year, including the student art show in the spring. Our visual communication design and digital music labs are the finest in the region. You can see that students and faculty have access to the latest technology to use in their creative work, be it editing a recording, developing a new video game, or laying out a magazine. Our largest enrollment is here at our Western Campus, where we have a dynamic visual communication design program with courses in photography, graphic design, web design, 3D design, animation, and illustration. The art department at West has painting, drawing, and ceramic studios, display areas for student works, and a gallery located in the main library. The West Campus Theater is home to a wide range of theater productions, concerts, and our summer performing arts camp. Our next stop is West Shore's Corporate College West, where we'll check out our new dance studio and Mac Lab. The Mac Lab will host photography as well as graphic and web design classes for West Shore students. Our last stop is the Metro Campus's Tommy LaPuma Center for the Creative Arts, which has over 75,000 square feet of studio, lab, and classroom space. It's also home to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Library and Archives, an invaluable resource for our students and faculty. The Center for Creative Arts was built in 2009 and named in honor of legendary music producer Tommy LaPuma who grew up in Cleveland before going off to New York and Los Angeles to produce hit records for Barbara Streisand, Paul McCartney, Diana Krall, and George Benson, among many others. When folks visit our recording arts wing, they can't believe the quality of our studios, labs, and equipment, from the solid state logic board in Studio A to the Steinway piano in the tracking room. The studios are a perfect complement for our jazz studies program, which is nationally known through our partnerships with the Berklee College of Music and the Hart School. I love the flexibility of our black box theater. On Saturdays, it is full of young musicians playing in our Creative Arts Academy Preparatory Orchestra. The black box space also comes to life when we host our student showcase, the Black Box Club, which features student work from all of our creative arts disciplines. And that, folks, is the day in the life of our Creative Arts Center of Excellence, where we work hard to help students develop the skills and techniques needed to find their creative voice. So what did you think? That was our pilot episode. Personally, I kind of freaking loved it. And I want you to love it too. We have a ton of cool ideas for the show, like the weekly skits and a top 10 list. However, that's not enough. We need you to send in your stuff. Yeah, you. Send us your photos, animations, vids, vines, whatever you want to show us. We have two rules. Keep it PG and stay within the theme guidelines. Send your submissions to spo.try-c.edu. The graphics should be on the screen somewhere. Oh right here. <laughs> Next month's theme is health and wellness. All right, Kyra out. <laughs>